everybody. We're back with the authors of Peril, Robert Costa and Bob Woodward. Let's get to accountability for a second. So all of this, this lie, um, all of this pressure being put on Republican leaders to not publicly call Biden the president. So you have a question of uh, transfer of power there. You, uh, a lot of them are actually going out there and saying, well, we should investigate whether there's a fraud here, even though, um, from what I've heard, talking to other uh, people on the show who work in Washington, that behind the scenes, nobody really believed it. Do, do, do you get a sense that the people who were perhaps not the president, not Eastman, not the tight inner circle in the White House, did the people in Washington believe that there was fraud, even the ones who were being sort of tacitly approving of the tactic? No. And, and see, what's interesting is the two most conservative Trump supporters in the Senate, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina and Senator Mike Lee of Utah, big Trump supporters, they looked at Trump's claim and said, we're going to investigate. They investigated and said, there's zero evidence to support the election was stolen. And it, it's, uh, as we say, it's not Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer saying this. Mm -hmm. It's the Trump supporters. But and not they, publicly, just to him. Uh, no, well, yes. Not publicly. No, and that the is key. undermining confidence in the election by the American people and the world. It's important. Our reporting shows that the big lie, this idea of election fraud, was not some passing storm for American democracy. It's the climate right now inside the Republican Party. These sources would come over to Woodward's house, to my house, and they would talk some of these Republicans for hours about how they feel they have no political capital to speak up. Even if they don't believe in President Trump's claims, they're not willing to go out there and counter him. That's the dynamic right now ahead of 2022 and ahead of 2024. Bob, you've been in Washington a long time. You've reported on a long time. Have you ever seen a more cynical or destructive use of political gamesmanship? Well, uh, you know, there have been lots of efforts going back to Anything Nixon. Anything close to this. this. This was a subversion or an attempted subversion of democracy, and it never stopped. And here's the problem. It continues. A reviewer for the New York Times of Peril said it's like the epilogue yes. is the beginning. It's the prologue. We are into it again. We think Trump's going to run mm -hmm. and run again. He's yeah. got a lot of support. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he could... We <laughs> not to You're, give, away, I, not no, to give no. away the end of your book. Okay. But <laughs> the last <laughs> sentence is, peril remains. Yeah. Okay, a little chill, a little chill down the spine just yeah. now. And I think the peril will remain unless there actually are consequences. Here's my metaphor for this. J on January 6th, a bunch of people who were addicted to all the lies mm -hmm. stormed the Capitol. They were addicted to that drug that was being sold to them. But the drug dealers are not being pursued. And so the addiction will continue. Okay. It, it, it's, an, it's an interesting way uh, to look at it, and, but 600 people have been charged in that investigation. Sure. And we still don't. Who really organized it? I mean, Trump was the spiritual godfather sure. of the insurrection. No question about that. But to get 600 people to do the same thing uh, is very unusual, takes a lot of skill and so there's there's work to be done on that the people who voted to impeach president trump in the republican party those are the ones who are getting out of the gop because of the primary races when you say where's the accountability for republicans they don't feel any accountability because they feel they're right at the the red hot center of where the gop actually is so and the it, only consequences are for the people who did the right thing to, to a certain extent, that's exactly right. But uh, Mitch McConnell, again, he's the embodiment of the Republican Party. And uh, you do this so well. So McConnell, this, you know, from Kentucky and uh, running the Republicans in the Senate, uh, in the cloakroom would gather around with senators. And, do and then they mock President Trump. And that comes through in the book. I mean, this is a story of Republicans, even if they're publicly with President Trump, 
Leader McConnell, one of his favorite jokes to tell in the cloakroom is, do you know why uh, former Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, uh, he called President Trump a moron but denied it? Do you know why he was able to deny it? Because he called him an expletive moron. Moron. <laughs> 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 That's how you win Pulitzers, buddy. I know. I gotta learn. Just drop I the f bomb. Thank you, Bob. Oh well, but, but, <laughs> it's news. McConnell did. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. news. It's okay. Yeah. We have to take one more break, uh, but stick around because when we come back, I will ask them about a scene in the book that took their breath away. We'll be right back.